Welcome back to the NDS. We are here at Verlandering for race 16. Take a quick look at qualifying up and down the board. And we'll be getting ready to go here. As the 21 of Jake is on pole for this race. As the pace car pulls in, we are getting ready to go green here. And now the green flag flies and the iRacing 450 is underway. Uh, it's all about not being aggressive too early. I see. So far, I see the usual suspects up here. Bissell making his way around, but doesn't really have friends down there. King trying to push it on the inside. Jake has friends up there high. As you really get 2 3 wide, that's really going to be where things get interesting. Born ready, kind of slow through the uh, corner there. As it looks like the 48 may have have ha had help, but ducks trying to duck back in line or not. All the movement back there is really uh, fascinating. There, vent going in four wide, trying to survive with the 18 there just in line oh they're all three wide toad and hyper hyper's got to make his way into that high side now jerry's gonna try and switch it down the middle they're just all there it's completely menacing Zent's making a bit of a mistake. Big hit for KSS. In the wall. No caution. Now there's a caution. Alright. Late caution on that one. Seems as though most of the pack is still right... Uh, some of the pack still racing. Everyone 16th on back is uh, not racing for a position, but after some mouse ASMR, these guys are still mixing it up. As we have a very delayed yellow for that incident. The three wide for the lead coming to the yellow flag. It's gonna be Silent Fang gets the yellow there. Let's go back and view that uh, moment that brought out the caution. And the view from Born Ready's uh, perspective this is not what 37 wanted to see. Just hard in the wall. The three car, packing it in, done for the day. And a 37 coming down pit road. With the late reaction to the caution. Seeing everybody here in line. Looking good. Early yellow, huh? Who would have thought? Seems like everybody pitting. Huh. Could have seen that one coming. You want to see first one off pit road. It's always an interesting battle. And it looks like the 18 got it there. We'll see coming as we pace. 18 of Silent Fang led at that time. Lights are off on lap 7. 
so 36 there were as 21 of Jake some of these guys not sure if it took four tires or just had a really ass pit stops or who knows they may have fitted twice see Jake and Hyper back there who knew top 10 as listed in the graphic and we see a couple guys we usually don't expect to see in the top 20 even top 15 that's just how plate racing be let's we'll see how it's gonna go when we come back to green on the lights mark yep greens out everybody pedals down balls out Maybe of the restart being single file, we'll see a bit more calm racing before the storm. But you never know. 23 is getting her done on the bottom. About due for a good finish. Plate Track King picking up where he left off at Talladega. And already see some two, even three wide moves being made here. As it seems like the faster cars in front of the double zero are racing like it should be. 33 backed off huh strange so it's all about getting the help you need that's kind of where all the strength of this race begins and ends like you can make a move down low but if Joe Bunn goes with you kind of screwed huh like that real plate racing that NASCAR shoves out. Uh, Zentz making his mark this season. Not going to be denied. And seems like 23's run's kind of stalled out. Yeah, you do not want to be balls deep on the inside entering three. That's probably one of the worst places to be. Zed's making it work, though, despite not being on the inside. Oh, man. If anything, this reminds me of Hula Hoop, but it's just rather, rather just that much more different than Hula Hoop. Seems like they're too wide making friends along the way, and then the 51 going for a move. I, Volley sure as hell can't catch his draft, so. Not sure if anyone's going to take out the two car. Oh, fuck. Blasta. Just running his race inside the top ten. Having himself a day. Now the 51 got that help with the 23. Both of them running the inside lane, but top four seem to have uh, peeled off. CS dropping low, Duke going lower, and now they're all just in a weird line that they're taking. It's, huh, it's fascinating what these guys think are the fastest way around. Bissell makes the jump down. Maybe, who knows? Maybe that 48 will actually have some run here going on the inside. He's got he's got guys down there with him. Unless he jumps back in to the outside. There's a helicopter cam. Now where did Volley come from? They're about to go four wide going into the turn. The 18 is just out of place. The 11 rightfully backs off, but that's going to kind of cuck the field for a while. And also really stomp out Volley's run. And now Kryptonite trying to make some help on the bottom. Misty Viper in the mix. Italian Bomb still with them. Ah. Toad Warrior, oh, having to go all the way down, seeing the 22 make his mark. 
All 36 are still relatively in, in view here. 99, making the push. Now Duke and Bissell going side by side. Unfortunately, Blasta is not helping the cause on the Duke's line there. That's going to stifle it out. But turn three is actually advantageous for Duke. Just needs the help from Italian Bomb. All it really takes is just one or two good pushers, and your line is going. Vent coming right up the middle, taking no prisoners. 23 is going to come and block that line. Duke's got three lines and Italian bums pushing his way through. Whoa, RS Fast 11 getting a bit touchy on Bissell's quarter panel. Oh, Vet Nation and a big wreck. Oh, that's the big one. Oh, that is the huge one at Verlandering. Man, it'd be easier to tell you who didn't get in the wreck. I only see, I, like, fuck, there's only like seven cars that don't have damage coming around turn four. Unbelievable. And that, one of the largest wrecks in NDS history took place. Oh my god. Kryptonite barreling. This reminds me of the 2002 nationwide race at Talladega. Like, no, no prisoners. Jerry. One of the cleanest wreck avoidances I've ever seen from a driver. Let's go helicopter view. This is, this is awful. They just keep coming. Nobody. That is every body. Holy cow. Like. I think that even though the 8's involved, the 19, he's got damage. The 8's probably has some damage. Oh my god. It is the huge one at Verlandering. Alright, let's go. Let's go on board with Jerry. Wreck avoidance of the fucking century right here. I don't even think he totally avoided it, but... Holy shit, he damn well did as good of a job as any. Oh my god. There you see the seven there were as survivors. Let's just go with Vent. I want to get a, a close-up on Vent to see how exactly this happened. Oh, Duke... Duke actually came down. Oh, I thought it, maybe Vent made a move down himself or got hooked. No, Duke came down. And that started one of the big, probably the biggest wreck in NDS history. Nothing compares to what we have just witnessed. All right. Uh... Back to live, see if a double zero as BS Fast in 11 is the race leader. And Bissell coming out second, RS third. Oh my. I, th I think there's going to be a lot of cars still racing, but they ain't going to be racing for much. Some of the drivers got surprisingly little damage in their crash, so who knows? 
Maybe there will be more than seven competitive cars. Uh, well, well, I guess now's a good time. I need to shell out the sponsor. iRacing is an MMO racing game that offers, above everything, a realistic experience of what actual racing is all about. iRacing started in 2008, and it was built off of um, NR2003, so iRacing is actually based off of this game right here that we are watching NDS on. And it's kind of become like an eSport for racing if drivers looking to get experience in iRacing or make a career off of racing in eSports like Coca-Cola series that NASCAR has, I think. And, yeah, don't let people tell you that playing video games isn't a real job because iRacing has their Coca-Cola series, and there's the Overwatch League. I don't know why I'm showing Overwatch in an ad for iRacing, but gamers are doing a job. Fuck, this went way off the rails. All right, back to the race. Okay, um, now we need to just get back to the next ring flag. Alright. So... Alright, despite the absolute catastrophe you have just witnessed in front of your face, there are actually a good 26 cars on the lead lap and 27 in the race. Duke 88 is having a pit problem. I guess that's come up. It's for starting the big one, I guess. And speaking of the big one, a driver that was involved in said big one is currently pacing the field as the leader. The double zero leading this field back to green. Pop off, I guess, or maybe not because he might be on the wrong pit strategy. Well, whatever happens, happens because... Fuck, ain't no time travel. Or mind control. Back to green. The double zero gets a pretty good start there. Bissell wasting no time at all, getting low. And, yeah. I just want to see how many cars keep up with this pack, because... Yeah, I see, like, those guys where Arn and Shafa are, they're just not going to get up to speed. It's going to be tough for even some of these other guys behind the likes of Krugermeyer to get up to speed with these guys. Oh, they're, man they're maintaining, though, but that might just be because of the six being slow in the corner. It's going to be hard to tell who gets this bread. Uh, the double zero is uh, not exactly the fastest pin around here. 51 to the lead, by the way. Speaking of what, what are the list of dead from that crash? Uh, 24, 28, 52, 42, 41, 11, 36, 29, 19. Ha! Huh. There were some good drivers involved in that one. May they be missed. Yeah. They're definitely racing single file because those cars behind the likes of Jerry and Kyle D, they're barely chugging along and I think the double zero actually has or had some damage that they're trying to improv fix which is why they're not exactly the fastest car on track and he's making his move to pit road as well so I mean it was nice seeing him while I was up there it was kind of a funny joke but uh I guess it ain't funny now oh well Let's see which one of these drivers actually mixes it up in the lead Yeah, Misty Viper. Italian Bomb has a legit chance of making this lead happen. Like, those guys, like Vent and company, are just struggling to keep up. We've got about, what, eight cars, eight, nine cars that are good? There were the seven survivors. Or I don't even think it was to fuck. I know Jerry did a great job not getting right. That wreck is going to be on my mind through the entire race. 
I hope you know that because that was a game changer. A big game changer. So, yeah, Duke is still having his issue on pit road. I think he has, uh, I don't know, 23 not having a good season from what they expected. Um, 33 of Italian bum doing good. Oh, I mentioned that. Ladion. Uh, the nine has a chance to really push it to the next level here. Ladion's rookie season was definitely a lot more fruitful. Him and Ethan were really a cut above the rest when it came to rookies as they both made the final four. But they've both taken steps back this season. It's easy to see why with this cut competition that's coming back. Like You got the 48 of Bissell. He's looking to make a real playoff push. He, he did make the playoff season one, but he kind of all fell apart. And holy cow. Got ourselves... Uh, how are those really slow cars doing? They're only eight seconds back when they hit the line. And BS Fast and 11 is still on the lead lap. We'll probably run up on him fairly soon, though. Seeing the lap times compared to how many seconds he's down. Yeah, you can see in them. You can see the double zero in the distance going into turn one as they hit the line. This is like the late game pack racing. Is how there's so little cars that it's hard to make a move. I think we're hitting that part sooner rather than later just because of the absolute load of cars that were involved. Like, holy cow, that was massive. RS Fast and 11 is strictly in position to do something about this. Like, he's not that far from the points lead, and Hyper is having to deal with damage from the big ones. So, there's a chance. I'm just saying... There's a chance we could see a new points leader after this race. Or who knows, maybe Blast Duck can gap them both after something bad happens to the 51. And 5, I guess. Fuck it. I'm just speculating. 21's not going to have a good race. and Really sucks for some of these guys in the hunt. Like I think Mizzou was out of the race. He's in the hunt. CS Fast and 11's in the hunt. He's out. So is Ace. Silent Fang somewhere. He was involved. I mean, fuck. You can just do a dice roll on, like, just pick a random number from this field, and like, the the over under on them being involved is pretty damn high. All right, so they're coming up on BS Fast and Eleven to put him a lap down. Yeah, but double zero's five seconds of fame this race was uh, in part due to rather costly strategy. I mean, I don't think he wanted to be with all those wrecked cars, but I'm not sure. Maybe the double zero's race isn't fucked, who knows? All I know is that uh, fast lane's going to lap the fast lane. Ah, uh, it's almost tradition at this point. Well, that's a that's a that's a that's a sad moment. Let's make it happy. Um, fuck! I stop looking at the main pack for every fucking time. Uh, these guys are racing in their own little group, and then oh, Hyper got more damage than I thought. I mean, still a top twenty car isn't that bad. And then there's this little group here, and that's really about it. Honestly, the biggest group is the lead group. Um, and with the double, oh, looks like the two kind of slowed down that turn. I thought double zero slowed down, but no. I don't want this pack to break up on me. Jesus Christ. We'd be starving for content at that point. Goddamn. Shh. 
Jerry could get a second win here. It'd be re- if Jerry winning here would be perfect revenge compared to a season one where he barely lost a squeaker to Tayo. Oh, they're four wide coming off the corner somehow. But there's only like nine cars in this pack. <laughs> they're four wide. Uh, my mistake. I think I miscounted. Maybe there's ten. Maybe there's nine. I don't know. I, I can't math. My brain's got fried. So maybe a good math person will tell me how many cars were involved in the big one. Jesus Christ. A cell leads the train, but uh, I can't really tell for how long. It's just the ultimate go off my back, man. Jerry's just hounding him there. If anything, he'd, Jerry would like make a move, try to switch switch it up. But uh, I see the two trying that, and try he might. Ends in failure. Honestly, one of the reasons this track kind of has like big wrecks is there's no like place for crashes to run off into like I go back there are two looming walls on each side which makes it near impossible for people to dodge wrecks if a car is taking up like all the tracker is like sliding across the top three making their break for it as and make your own train racing joke here. Yeah. The plate races usually start with a bang, end with a whimper. Kind of like cold weather in March. Uh, Misty Viper taking the longer line around the turn. It looks like actually pit stops are coming into form right now. Yeah. I guess they'd start up now. I mean, it's one thing to keep the racing interesting because there's honestly not much racing to go around. Despite how awesome those first two green flag runs were. Drivers coming in. Yeah, these damaged up machines. They're 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 trying their best. Tayo's still out here. But like what what can you really do, man? So top three here. Remember BS Fast and Eleven on a different strategy. What if secretly, if this race goes green, the 4D Geeker Brain strapped by the double zero actually wins him the race? I will shit my pants if that happens. And with drivers coming in, drivers are indeed coming in. Lucas Cram. I think Volley you know, one lap behind the fold there. Uh, I think the 33 is getting himself up to snuff. He's on lap 31. Double zero is a little ways back though, which is unfortunate. Yeah, they're making a they're they're kind of spreading and shedding themselves out. I see Ladion trying to get the draft from the 33. That's all really happening right now. Now it's Jerry Bissell RS. Lead me to believe that maybe the 51 has the lead now. Cannot verify this until they hit the line. These guys just quite getting up to speed. Plate racing in NDS is a different beast compared to real plate racing. The coordination is not there, so expect drivers' packs to get smaller and smaller as the race goes on. Also, new leader, 51.
Yep. 33 going going hard though. Yeah, feel free to make a run at this leader. It's a 1v4 right now. But once you get there, it's every man for himself. The cell not to be outdone as the plate track king moving in. Honestly, the huge one probably scared the pack so shitless that they just don't want to wreck again. That's my only theory. 33, moving in, low, trying something. He's got no help down there, though. Absolutely no help. As the 51 maintains form, Jerry giving some assistance. Jerry trying to give assistance, like, kind of hard to help through turn three and four. The 33 just needs just that little bit more. The underdog of the day here. Jerry getting the push from Ladion. It's a new start. Also... By definition, Duke is not DNF. It's just that he'll technically finish the race. It's just that he's going to be a comical amount of laps down in a 46-lap race. The 34 has got to figure something out, man. Maybe him trying to get down there alone or get help in the 33. Because whatever they're trying to do with the 51, it is just not working. I think RS may actually have a superior pit crew. Not sure how he got the lead from there, but now it's up to him to hold it. As the, fifth, uh, the double zero comes off pit road. Double zero making his final stop of the day. Yeah, I don't see the double zero winning. He's probably losing too much time on the track to really get there. As the field single files, I'm a lap down. This is actually a good time for the 33 to get a run down the bottom. Italian Bomb trying to force his way out in there for the lead. Ladion to help. Bassell coming too. They've outnumbered the 51. Have toppled him. New leader. The 33 and the 9. Running it down there trying to take it now. That's King, the next lap car. Honestly, I kind of feel bad for a double zero. If he would have just been on a normal pit strategy, he probably would have had a better finish. I mean, he got clout for leading a couple laps, but is that really worth it? Eh, probably. Now with double zero, got some drafted partners. I'm not sure if he'll stay in this group. So for now, I think it's just the five there were. Ladion out front and about, and then Bissell staying reserved behind him, not wanting to make a move. And I think they're just going to pull up at the front, waiting to get reach for seven, but Bissell not wasting time in the 51, absolutely looking for someone to go with. I don't think they're close enough to make it happen, though, but damn, they're trying. And now we're three wide behind these two. And they've hit the seven. Everyone's scrambling. Jerry, nowhere to go. Stuck on the lap traffic. Is That's going to be tough for the 34. Tough scene. Vassell, with all the room in the world for the lead, is the 51. The pusher now. Looking to try to shortcut the turn to get around him. Here he comes. I think vassell has got the help, though. Yeah, that steady trickle of lap cars. Not sure how many they'll run into. Or what the fuel whatever is for this race, but it can't be worse than whatever happened earlier. Ladion pushing Bissell in the fast lanes, working together low. 
48. Might want to invest in protecting that side. If, and Ladion jumps it. Ladion jumps the gun to take the 48 out of the lead. This could be Ladion's win. Italian Bump could use his win too, but he's not that close there. The fast lanes still on the work together. They got Jerry on the cause. And the 33 jumps in. With limited laps left, they're going to have to get around these cars. The 13, not the fastest man in the book. That's going to really stack up this, guys. Fast lanes still one. Fast lanes. The fast lanes absolutely work in this field to its limit. As Jerry moves in the second. Is this it? Talk about drivers with six career wins. This could be the dagger to Pierce 7. Run out of time. Looking to be about six to go. Jerry's got to figure something out. Absolutely no time to waste here. Because you in line behind the 51. This could be a setup. The 9 going in pretty low there. Oh, shit. There's too many cars lined up on the high side. If the low side wants to make it happen... The Cherries sees that in mind. He's buying his time. Everybody fitting in one line. Ladion not wanting to conform. He wants to go. As there's actually a few lap cars led by Volley. I see the double zero actually picking up the position from the cars these guys are lapping. Buying their time. These three lap cars are the perfect opportunity to make or break. 34. Patience are golden right now. Those three. Those three get racy when the leaders catch them. That's going to be some shit right there. Jerry tucked in line. He's got nothing to worry about. Nothing to fear. Nothing to hide. 51. Staying out front. Keeping these guys there. Jerry's going to go low. He's got the move to make. The double zero is going to go with him. Double zero knows what he's got to do for his own race to get around these lap cars. Actually breaking his trust with the 51. 51 darts down low trying to save face. Coming up on three to go. Oh man. Jerry's got some decisions to make. BS Fast and 11 up to 21st of all things. 51 coming down low. Jerry may have left too much of a room on the clock there. The 9 following up. On RS's move, 33 Italian bomb moving low. He sees some opportunity. Everyone's pushing it low around Jerry. As Italian bomb in the 33, making a push on Ladion. And now the 9 can kind of go for this lead here. Coming to 2 to go. The outside's got more manpower, though. It'll be interesting to see if anyone tries to make the jump down going into turn one. Uh, double zero. Looking like he's probably the best candidate for it. And Ladion settles in line in front of the 51. The next lap, the next lap traffic's too far ahead. Now everyone's getting back in line. 
RS making a move. He's got Italian bums push of grace. Two by two for the lead with time running out fast. Oh man. 51 goes back high to try to just try to pull that line. Get, get what he can. White flag, white flag. Jerry going low for it. He knows what he's got to do. 34 with one final move. But 33 is not going to help him. Doesn't look like it. It's like the 51's got a clear shot to this victory. Gladion staying in tow. It's not what I expect now, of all things. Gladion has to be looking around for alternate line. He's trying to clear up the inside. No, he's not. He's just going to be pushing away, pushing away. Checkered flag. RS Fast Lane 11 ascends the stairway to 7 and wins at Verlandering. Whoo-wee, man. I may have made a lot of moves before the checkered flag, but going down the front, it it was a hell of a race. I expect a victory lane speech will be very humble about this. I expect absolutely nothing to go wrong in the aftermath of this race. All right. Here's our post-race times. You can see it was just absolutely spread so thin. You see our lap cars and our ranks of dead. Well, if anything, we definitely got to saw an absolutely massive crash in just the number of cars it consumed going down the back there. Don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Anyway, that's all we've got for today. We will see you next time. Take care.